to start with Dragon Age. Like, like literally, because once you get into Dragon Age, you don't know where the hell to go because there's so much stuff to do. This big giant world, oh my God, are you kidding me? Like when you think, okay, I, I got this one area figured out. Okay, it's a little bigger, it's a little bigger. Oh my God, does it ever end? Bioware has always been amazing world builders and Dragon Age Inquisition shows that they can do it just as well in a fantasy setting as they can in sci-fi. What you explore in Dragon Age Inquisition is so big that I actually had people have to warn me like, leave this place immediately. Like don't try to do everything in this one area because you're gonna have a bunch of other great areas to go to first. Like this is a warning that there's too much to do. You need to move on. Pop open your map, there's quests here. There's a mine over here. There's a, the main objective over here. And you could run in any direction. You could do anything. And you know, that's that whole like Skyrim feel you know, that you could just explore the world and you know, absorb it and you know, do all these really cool things. And uh, none of it ever gets boring. Like I'm still mining a bunch of ore and crafting weapons and I'm you know, 100 hours into the game and I'm still having fun doing that. And it never feels boring or repetitive. Everything feels fresh and new because you get a new concept of the world, a new idea, a new book, a new story, something from everything you do. And there's just so much of it. You're the bomb right from the get-go because, you know, because your hand is all green and flashy, you are pretty much the most important person in the planet at the start of the game. So going into the whole story, knowing that you're this important, feels really impactful and, and significant. But my favorite aspect about Dragon Age isn't necessarily the combat or the giant story, but like all these little touches the game does to make you feel like this boss inquisitor who's in charge of this giant army. Uh, and that plays out in like the sentencings, for, for instance. When you get to sit on your throne, you get to sit back, and you're thrown and they bring people up here and you get to have like a little miniature trial and decide their fate. Like just doing stuff like that makes you feel like a boss, basically. It's just the full connectivity, the experience. Um, every time you do something, it's, it's all meaningful. None of it's like senseless. The way they sort of interconnect things, um, whether it's just my army's intelligence or uh, their forces or their weapons, which make them stronger, which helped me get more influence, and it's just sort of this cycle that just keeps going on and on. I enjoy that a lot. Without a doubt, Cassandra. She's a little rough around the edges, but you know what? I'm gonna crack that shell. Cassandra is my true love, but because I've played girls in Bioware games, Cassandra will never love me back. You know, I haven't sealed the deal yet, but uh, Scout Harding is, she's a, she's a snazzy lady. She's really cool. Uh, you know, you, she's not one of your companions, which is really uh, an interesting thing because you couldn't really romance too many people outside of your, your circle of companions in the previous games. But uh, Scout Harding's the, the, the dwarf lady that's uh, going out and just scouting all these locations for you and you can throw in your, your little flirt at her and she's just real charming about it all the time. And uh, she's, she's one of the most charming characters in the game, which is surprising because she's just a minor character. Admittedly, I kind of have my Inquisitor flirt with everyone possible, including the random knights and the requisition officers, but her true love it's down to two. It's either going to be Sarah the Archer or Iron Bull the Canary. Because Sarah is kind of silly, but a lot of fun, a lot of fun to be around. And Iron Bull looks scary at first, but then he's got a gentle soul underneath all the, you know, axe stabbing and whatnot. Early on in my Dragon Age game, I originally went after Cullen, but uh, playing as a Canary male, he just wasn't really having it. Um, so then later on, I switched tracks and started going after Josephine. Um, 
I really like her, she's super nice, super smart, she always has really good ideas on the war map with how to handle all the different situations, but uh, her sort of love track that you go down gets really complicated because it's all mired with Orlesian politics and like her family being exiled and all this stuff, so it kind of turned into a huge mess, but what are you going to do? Uh, my favorite of the love enders would have to be the Iron Bull, just because his is the funniest sex scene. There's so many of the sex scenes that are just pillow talk or trying to be erotic in some way, but Iron Bulls are all hilarious. Like, he's, you just find him post-coital, and with the, whichever party member, he go, he swings both ways. And then the rest of the party just comes in and just goes like, oh, hey, and he's just like, Jesus Christ, just everybody. It, it's, it's funny, it's funny. What makes Mike Inquisitor the best is he's just a badass on the battlefield. Sword and board, I, I went all the way, you know, tank style, you know, charge in and shield bash a bunch of guys. And when you're playing as the sword and board warrior like me, you know, every time you shield bash somebody, they fall on the ground and everybody else in your party could just like you know, throw all their crap at them and you know, just destroy everybody. And I, you just feel ultra powerful every time you go into battle with, or I feel ultra powerful when I, I jump into battle with my Inquisitor and he's totally cool. My Inquisitor came from humble beginnings as an oppressed Dalish elf and rose quickly in life to become the Inquisitor of the Inquisition. Yes. And despite all that, despite her instant rise to fame, she's very humble. Even though everyone around her is saying, you know, oh, you're the chosen of Andraste, you're the herald. She's like, you know, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm not that great, but I'll do whatever I can to help out the Inquisition and she spends all of her time going around and, and helping people and making the world a better place and just being so great and so helpful to everybody. Okay, so here's the thing with my Inquisitor and why he was such a badass. So I was playing as a Canary male and basically I'm like seven feet tall and I didn't realize this is what was gonna happen, but my dude, he's gigantic. And people talk about this all the time in my game. Anytime I talk to even like human characters, dwarven characters, they would always comment like, wow, you're as tall as the legends say. And it's like, oh yeah, I am kind of a big guy. Um, but what was funny is sometimes you get to these cutscenes where like my character would be in the background and somebody in the foreground would be talking, but all you'd see is like my chin, a little bit of my chin, and just all torso, just giant canary torso just dominating the frame. So I feel like Dragon Age Inquisition really smartly expanded upon a lot of the systems that kind of got, I don't know, downsized in Dragon Age 2. Um, there's all sorts of character customization, weapon customization, the whole being able to pause the battle and then look at it from like a top-down view is really nice. And actually one of the things I really liked about the tactical view, and this is a really small detail, but just being able to use the trigger on the game controller to make the time go forward and then as you release the trigger it slows back down. I actually really like that a lot more than just the hard pause, unpause, of Dragon Age Origins and using the keyboard. I think more than anything, Dragon Age Inquisition really allows a player to build their own story, uh, even more than, than previous Bioware games, but you, you get this ability to just go out and explore the world and all, all these little stories stop, start popping up. You, you could read a letter and get a quest that'll lead you to this other location where you know something terrible happened to some people and you know all about their situation. That's a really cool story. You know and then there's the the characters individual stories and uh, the romances and uh, how you build up your keep and it just it, it really just feels like you create what's happening to you or you you dictate what, what's what's happening with your Inquisitor and with your Inquisition. And that's something that you really couldn't do. It was more kind of linear in, in, the, in previous games. And uh, Inquisition does that incredibly well. Everything matters. Everything plays into the Inquisition, helping it succeed, reaching your goal. Even the tiniest things help out the Inquisition get influence. And altogether, it always feels like you're doing something meaningful, so it never gets boring, and you will just keep doing all these minute little things because it's working. It's working to your goal. Here's the crazy part. I haven't played any of the Dragon Age games until now, and yet Inquisition is still super compelling. You don't need all the backstory, and it's clever how 
Bioware set it up where, you know, it's a different hero for each story. So the fact that I have no context or anything that's going on in the world, it doesn't matter because the game still does a great job of explaining it to me as the story unfolds. My favorite moment, I would say, from the game would be when you acquire Skyhold because it's just, it's a really, it makes you really feel like you're important, like you're a king. I mean, before you have, you know, you have a little base set up and that's great. That's cute. Cool story, bro. But when you get Skyhold, that's how you know it's like really serious business. Yeah, so in the Storm Coast, you could just be running around, running down the beach and all of a sudden you come through this cave and there's just a, a giant fighting a dragon. In my mind, I'm just like, holy shit. And then the companions behind me, I think I had uh, Iron Bull and Sarah with me and Iron Bull just says, that's badass. And then Sarah says, wow, that's really cool. And <laughs> you know, they're, they're thinking what I'm thinking and it was just a really, really neat moment. I was talking with Iron Bull, just saying like, oh, how are things, you know? And I get a romance option that says, oh, you haven't known true passion, have you? And I'm like, this is gonna be hilarious because when, I've, when I'd gotten similar ones for other characters, they'd just been like, oh my, oh my goodness. You tell Iron Bull, he's like, nah, it's fine. And he starts going into semi-graphic detail about his previous sexual liaisons. And now suddenly I'm the one who's like, whoa, bro, what, what's going on? So my favorite moments in Dragon Age Inquisition are the dragon fights. So spoiler alert, this game's called Dragon Age, there's going to be dragon fights in it, surprise. Um, they're, they're pretty epic. Unlike in Dragon Age Origins where when you would fight a dragon, it was just kind of this static enemy that would stand there. The dragons in Inquisition, they jump and dance around the battlefield and there's always like some sort of broken down building or a column nearby and they'll knock it over and the rocks will go everywhere and it feels exciting. Um, but then, after you do the dragon fight, the game does kind of make you feel like a bit of a monster because some of the NPCs will talk about how all the dragons are dying out and why are people going around and killing the dragons? They're like these beautiful, magical creatures. And it's like, I know, but they dropped that sweet loot. That was a pretty sweet video, right? If you want to see more, go to Games Radar's YouTube page over here. Or if you want to read, maybe up your game a little bit, go to gamesradar.com.